This is the Mo Money Podcast with your host, Jessica Morehouse. Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the Mo Money Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very excited to share my next interview with an amazing and inspirational man, Dr. Willie Jolly. He is the host of the number one motivational self-help radio show on SiriusXM, Wealthy Ways. He's also an award-winning motivational speaker, and he's been inducted into the Speaker Hall of Fame. And he is also an author of several books, including It Only Takes a Minute to Change Your Life, A Setback is a Setup for a Comeback, Turn Setbacks into Greenbacks, and An Attitude of Excellence. And if that weren't impressive enough. He also holds a doctorate in theology, and he is here to talk to me today about his journey. He's an inspiring story of um, basically having his job replaced by a karaoke machine and trying to figure out what to do next. And he is just an amazing person who has basically, if you need a kick in the pants, if you need some motivation to get to the next level, to turn your setbacks into comebacks, this is the episode for you. Thank you, Willie, for joining me on the show today. It's a pleasure talking to you. It's a, it's a privilege and a pleasure, a treat and a treasure and a joy beyond measure for me to be on with you. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Thank How do you, you like that? How do you like that? I, I like that a lot. <laughs> Good. Now, let me tell you how I start every interview as I'm going to en- energize your audience with this one. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. I didn't seek it. I didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute but in eternity is in it. Greetings to everybody who's listening and to everybody who will use this information to help them to grow and go to the next level. Absolutely. And what is that from? You didn't make that up, did you? No, I did not make that up. That is called God's Minute. And it was Mm -hmm. written by Dr. Benjamin Mays. Dr. Mays was the president of Morehouse College and a great educator and theologian and philosopher. He was instrumental in the life of one of his mentees, who you might come to, you might know his name maybe perchance. His mentee's name was Martin Luther King Jr. And he, oh, yeah, I've heard of that guy. You've heard of that guy somewhere? <laughs> and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and Dr. Mays met young Martin, who they called ML, they, he met him at 15 years old when uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s father brought young ML to Morehouse College at the age of 15 and said, Dr. Mays, this is my son who will be going to college here in the fall. He's 15, just graduated from high school and will be going to college. He's a very smart boy going to college at 15. And I would like you to inspire and empower and encourage him to do great things. So Dr. Mays taught young ML that piece, as well as some other pieces that I've written and used in my books. And those pieces, when I finally got hold of them uh, 20 or 30, 25 years ago, when I started reading them, have changed my life. So I want, I want to continue that Uh, legacy. And that's why I start every interview with that message. Oh, I love it. I love that. Um, So Willie, you have an amazing story. Um, Let's kind of start from the beginning where you used to be a lounge singer and you kind of, you know, were having a, a good time doing that, making good money. And then everything kind of changed when you kind of got the boot. And, yes, uh, great story. Yeah. I had a setback. So I was a nightclub singer, a jazz singer, an inter- entertainer, a jingle singer. I've been saying jingles during the day in the nightclubs and lounges at night. And I sang jingles for a lot of the commercials you've heard on the radio over the years. Pizza Hut making it great. We work well together. News for and you. B-E-T, like entertainment TV. So I sang lots of jingles over the years and made a living singing jingles and making a living doing that. And then I would sing in these lounges and so forth at night. And uh, I'd sing in uh, these nightclubs. Then I I, I, I built one of those nightclubs into one of the top, Night spots in Washington, D.C., 
It became the number one spot. People were lining up at 7 o'clock for 8 o'clock show, 9 o'clock for 10 o'clock show. I became the the featured entertainment on the weekends, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we were doing well. I won the award, Best Jazz Singer, Best Entertainer. We have an a, a award in Washington called the Washington Area Music Association Award. It's like the Grammys, and we, mm-hmm. call, we call it a whammy, Washington Music Association <laughs> Award. I won it five times in a row, Best Jazz Singer, Best Entertainer, Best Performer. Things were going great. We were packing them mm-hmm. in. Well, one night I came to the nightclub. The club owner said, I want to talk to you after the night show. I told the guys in the band, we, we've been selling out for months. we got standing room only audiences. We're about to get our raise. So I went in his mm-hmm. office that night. He said, you were great. I said, thank you. The people loved you. I said, thank you. That's what's hard for me to tell you, but I got to tell you. Now that we made a lot of money, the owners of the club said they've got to get a better return on investment. And the only way to do that with a full nightclub is to lower the cost. And the band's the biggest cost. And there's something else going around the country that's mm-hmm. filling up nightclubs that's a lot cheaper than a band. And we, mm-hmm. we're going to try that for a while. We bought a karaoke machine. Ugh. And I said, but I can't believe that. What about my bills? And I learned mm-hmm. that night that nobody cares about your bills but you and the people you owe. Mm-hmm. And I went home yeah. and I told my wife, I said, I've got to do something else with my life. This is not working. I did everything mm-hmm. right. I worked hard. I, I built their, their business. I put out my own dollars to, to send out mailing lists. I, I did radio interviews, television interviews to build their business. And mm-hmm. I still got fired. I still got sacked. Exactly. And you know what I learned? A lot of people in America are similar places to today. They, mm-hmm. they were good employees. They worked hard. They did their best. They, they gave all they had, and they got downsized because mm-hmm. of numbers. It was a numbers game. It had nothing to do with their performance. It just had to do with mm-hmm. numbers. Uh, they might have they uh, uh, got replaced by some new technology. It was not performance-based. And I got angry that night, and I said, you know what? I'm going to change my life. I'm not going to let someone else control my destiny anymore. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I took a job while I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I took a job with the Washington, D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator, talking to Mm -hmm. little kids about staying away from drugs. And it was during that year I discovered an ability I didn't know I had. And for Mm -hmm. the little kids, the teachers would say, could you come to my teacher's association? And someone at the teacher's association would say, can you come to my church? And someone at the church would say, can you come to my company? And then someone in the company would say, you know, can you come to my association? And it continued to grow, and it just Mm -hmm. continued to uh, bloom and blossom. And one day, Les Brown, the great motivational speaker, was coming to the hotel where I was speaking in a little ballroom, and he was going to be speaking in the big ballroom, and he happened to walk by the ballroom where I was speaking and heard me speak and sing. And he said, you know what? You have something unique, and I'm starting a tour called the Music and Motivation Tour. You'd be the perfect opening act because you do both. And Mm -hmm. so a few months later, we kicked off the Les Brown Dream Team Music and Motivation Tour, which featured Les Brown, Billy Preston, Gladys Knight, and a little guy from Washington, D.C., who was the opening act, me. And because of Les, that's amazing. And then Les and Gladys took me around and introduced me to media people. And I got a little radio show called The Motivational Mm -hmm. Minute. And The Motivational Mm -hmm. Minute got popular and got syndicated and then led from that to radio to television with The Motivational Minute on television on CBS stations, which led to even longer programs on CBS and then PBS television. And then that led to Serious XM, where I'm honored to say today I have the number one motivational show in America on Serious XM radio across America on channel 141 and have been on the station for now 10 years. And then that led to one day a book publisher calling and saying, mm-hmm. I heard you on the radio, loved your ideas. I'd like to see if you're interested in writing a book. You'd be interested in writing a book. And I, I said, well, I, I, I don't know. He said, let me make you an offer. I said, I, <laughs> I just thought about it. I, I think I can do that. And so <laughs> I wrote my first book called It Only Takes a Minute to Change Your Life. 
mm-hmm. and it became a bestseller, national bestseller. Then my second book, a setback is a setup for a comeback, became an international bestseller. Took me around mm-hmm. the world. Then an attitude of excellence. Then turn. Then chicken soup for the Christian soul. And my newest book is called Turn Setbacks into Greenbacks. So mm-hmm. it's been amazing. And then. In 1999, I got a call from Toastmasters International. They said, you've been named one of the top five speakers in the world for this year. The former women include Colin Powell, Norman Schwarzkopf, Nelson Mandela, Margaret Thatcher, Christopher Reeve. And I said, what? Are you sure you got the right person? My name is Willie Jolly. And they said, you're the one. And they said, I said, but you must be mistaken. Those are big dogs. And the lady said something I'll never forget. She said, let me tell you mm-hmm. something. Little dog keep yapping loud enough and strong enough. Big dogs start to hear about you. So mm-hmm. amazingly, now I've been uh, named one of the top five speakers. I've been inducted in the Speaker Hall of Fame. But it's just the tip of what's yet to come. And I've continued to work hard and continue to travel. Now I'm honored to be on the Get Motivated Tour. Where I'm, tonight I'm in Mobile, Alabama. Tomorrow I'll be in New Orleans. And I replaced the, the legendary Zig Ziglar on the tour when he passed. For many years, Zig Ziglar and General Cole Powell were the keynote speakers, and I'm grateful when he passed, they called me to replace him. Mm-hmm. So one question I have, because that is such an amazing story, but what I feel like, you know, people listening will, you know, can def- de- definitely identify with how you were at the beginning, losing your job and not knowing what to do. Uh what kept you going? That you know seems what? like a really tough, you know? Here's what, here's what everybody can take from that, and I want to make sure people don't. Because you're right. The many people mm-hmm. can identify with the losing the job, the setback, the challenges, mm-hmm. the difficulty. What was the difference? It was my attitude. Okay? Mm-hmm. It was my attitude that, that made the difference. And let me tell you what happened. When I lost my job, I was depressed. I was discouraged. I was, I was down in the dumps. But a friend of mine did something for me that changed my life. He gave me a book and a motivational tape. He gave me a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And he gave me a motivational tape. And in that tape was a quote that said, in five years, you'll be the same person you are except for two things. The people you, read, the people you meet who inspire you and, and empower you and the books that you read that motivate and lift you up. Mm-hmm. And that quote changed my life because I started mm-hmm. listening to motivational tapes. The people, I might not could meet them personally, but they helped to empower my attitude, to, to, to increase my possibility thinking and the books I read. So that's what I've been doing, and I'm grateful for that, and it has changed my life, those books, those, those audios, those, those people I've met, even if I didn't meet them in person, I met them by audio, I met them by video, I met them in a seminar. I might not have gotten to shake their hand or take a picture with them, but I heard their message, and it changed my attitude, and that mm-hmm. is how all those other things start, started happening, because I refused to give up, and I kept expecting Good things are going to come from my efforts. It's called hope. You know, mm-hmm. hope is an interesting word because hope says that you don't know what's going to happen from what you're doing or what's going to come tomorrow, but you are expecting it with open arms. Mm-hmm. And that's what hope. There were two little, there was a, 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 the power of hope. There were two sets of frogs, and they did this experiment. They took one set of frogs, they put them in a bucket of water. And it kept them there till their their air was almost extinguished. And mm-hmm. at the last minute, they pulled them out. <laughs> they caught their breath. They took a new mm-hmm. set of frogs and the old set of frogs and put them in two separate buckets of water at the same time. And they kept them in there till their air was almost extinguished. And they kept them in one more minute. The, the new frogs who had not been through anything gave up and died. But mm-hmm. the, the old frogs who had been through this before expected something good would come, and they held on, and they lived. Mm-hmm. That's the secret to this. You've got to have hope. And these books and audios gave me hope for the future so that I could keep holding on in the tough moments. And that's what I want to mm-hmm. encourage everybody who's listening to your, to your show right now to, to do. Mm-hmm. You might have gone through a divorce. I had mm-hmm. a lady come up to me about a year ago. And she said, my husband just left me. We were married for 29 years. And he found a, a younger woman and he left me. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. I'm devastated. I, I, I was a house housewife. I was a homemaker. and I raised the children, and now he has no need for me. What do I do? I said, here's what you do. You don't crawl up and die. You don't mm-hmm. curl up and die. You go forward with hope that the future will be better than the past and that good things are waiting around the corner. And I talked to her. She said, you really think so? I said, absolutely. She heard my story. She said, okay, I'm going to give it a... I saw that lady about uh, two months ago. She ran mm-hmm. up to me, hugged my neck. She said, you don't know what kind of year I have had. It's been the absolute best year of my life. I've gone to places I've never gone before. I've traveled around the country. I've gone to different kinds of functions. I've met wonderful new people I would have never met before. My life is fabulous mm-hmm. because... She had hope. So whether you're going through a divorce, whether you're going through a downsizing like I had, whether you're Mm -hmm. going through a disease, some sort of diagnosis that's not positive, you got to have hope. You got to have hope. Whether you're going through a disaster, you might have been, your house might have been destroyed in a storm or you might have had a car accident and you didn't have the money to fix it. Whatever you're going through, when you have hope and a positive attitude, you will start mm-hmm. to see the good things will start to come your way if you just don't give up. Absolutely. I completely agree. And I feel like definitely as I grow older, I, I understand how important that really is. And yeah, I, I, it's fe- funny because I've never really put a name to it. Yeah. Uh, but hope is a great word to use because, yeah, every year I just kind of hope that the next year will be better. I always try to put on a positive attitude, even if I don't feel it, you know, kind of that old saying is like smile, even if you don't want to smile, it really does make all the difference. And yeah, when you put positivity out there, I do feel like you do get positivity back. You get nothing when you're negative. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, there's an old saying that says, well, if you're positive, will everything always go perfect? No. But it'll mm-hmm. go better than when you were negative. <laughs> yep. That so, is very true. But, so this new book turns setbacks into greenbacks. Yes, I want to talk about it. Well, what it does, it gives you hope with your finances. So the setback mm-hmm. is a setup for a company. Oh, first of all, let me give everybody a little gift. You know, that guy Ooh. changed my life when he gave me that book and that audio. Yeah. And so Think and Grow Rich has been probably the singular next to the Bible, the most powerful book I've ever read in terms of changing mm-hmm. my thinking. The Bible is number one, but mm-hmm. I'm going to give everybody a copy of that book. Ooh. How you like that? I like it a lot. And I bet everyone listening is going to like it a I lot. Give I will include it. Everybody That's a amazing. copy of that book. Go to willyjolly.com slash gift. Willyjolly.com flash gift and you can download a copy of the book i was on the napoleon hill foundation faculty last year with 52 Mm -hmm. other people who talked about the impact of that book on his life some of them some of the greatest achievers and they they as a result of that they say you know what is what is it that we can do for you i said let me help others like i've been helped so they allowed me to give it to my friends so do you your folks and your listeners will be my friends and so anybody who wants to get a copy you go to willie jolly w-i-l-l-i-e J O L L E Y. Put an E in Jolly, like mm-hmm. Jolly Green Giant, Willie dot com. And at the end, so it's backslash slash gift. You'll get the book. You'll get another book called Leaps of Faith. And you'll get some audio interviews from my Sirius XM show with people who changed my life. So that's my gift mm-hmm. to everybody. Just like somebody helped me, I want to help somebody else. That's amazing. And by the way, I love your show. Oh. I was listening to it the other day, and oh, man, was I so pumped up just to, like, take on the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know. But, yeah, let's talk about your book. I I think it's such a great um, idea because it's not just a normal, you know, finance book that tells you about numbers and how you can save and how you can invest. But it's it's more about, yeah, kind of, you know, taking those setbacks, making them into comebacks in terms of your money. Yeah, it's about the attitude. It really is about the attitude it takes to create success after you've gone through tough times. And what mm-hmm. is it going to take? What kind of mindset does it take? Now, these are not just lessons that I – propagate. These are lessons I've learned from people who I've had on my XM show over the last 10 years. Many of them went from broke 
to mm-hmm. millionaires and some wow. even to billionaires. And wow. they, they gave strategies that helped them to do it. And they might be in different businesses, so none of them are in the same business, but the mindset is what makes the difference. And that's mm-hmm. what I saw was consistent in everybody I interviewed. You know, once I compiled all the information and the data, the research, I have all these interviews, hundreds of interviews, I found there were seven principles that they all mm-hmm. would talk about in their messages. They might use different words for them, but there were seven consistent principles. Those principles were, number one, don't panic. <laughs> That's first. Don't panic. There's a natural inclination to panic when things go bad. Mm-hmm. And it just says, oh, my God, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I lost my yep. job. What am I going to do? I'm going through a divorce. He just told me he doesn't want to be married. What am I going to do? I just got diagnosed. What am I going to do? Oh, my God, are you panic? Don't mm-hmm. panic. That's first of all. When you have a setback, don't panic. Panic mm-hmm. is taken from the Greek word to choke. Oh, Okay. And when you choke, you, you, you cut off the air to your brain. Or you, or you cut off the air mm-hmm. to your heart. You can't mm-hmm. breathe. So that's why people hyperventilate. And when you panic, you cut off the air to your brain so you cannot think clearly. And if you cannot think clearly, you cannot make wise decisions. And if you're going to make a decision when you're panicking, it's probably going to be a poor decision, a bad decision. 1929, there was a stock market crash. People mm-hmm. panicked, and many of them jumped off of bridges, mm-hmm. blew out their brains, not realizing the market would come back bigger and better than ever. This too shall pass. Mm-hmm. Okay, this too shall pass. So whatever you do, do not panic. It, it, there's no power in a panic. So don't panic. Mm-hmm. Number two, don't willingly participate nor commiserate in the gloom and doom. So you're mm-hmm. going through a tough time. You're going through, people have been downsized. And everybody say, oh, woe is me. Don't participate mm-hmm. in that. Don't sit around saying, oh, woe is me. Start saying, whoa, this is a great time to be alive. Now, things are not mm-hmm. perfect, but I can turn this around. When you have that, well, don't buy into all that gloom and doom. In other words, don't listen to all the naysayers, the negative people, the, the people who propagate all the negative talk. Mm-hmm. Don't buy in. A lady came up to me one day and said, uh, I hear you talking on the radio. And I, I, I hear you all that positive stuff. But didn't you know that Circuit City went out of business and Lennons and things went out of business and the unemployment mm-hmm. is 10%. I said, unemployment, 10%? She said, yeah. I mean, that, that means to me that 90% of the people still working. Mm-hmm. All right, they can, they can buy my book. I better keep working. I better get the word out. So, <laughs> so that is where you flip the negative and start to see positive. Look, mm-hmm. I want people to write this word. In every blessing, there's a burden. And yeah. every burden, there's a blessing. Okay, you just got to mm-hmm. start to look at it from another perspective. What you look for is what you'll find. In the desert, there are two creatures that are predominant: a hummingbird and a vulture. Mm-hmm. The hummingbird looks for life and finds it. The vulture looks for death and finds it. Whatever you look mm-hmm. for, you'll find. So if yeah. you look for the oh, gloom, like and, yeah, if you look for the gloom and doom. You'll find it. But if you look for the positive in life, the good in life, you'll find it as well. So don't willingly participate nor commiserate. Don't buy into Mm -hmm. that gloom and doom. Three is a big one. Mm -hmm. Don't let your pride poison your prosperity. Yep, yep. Okay. (laughs) This is a big one. So people tend to find times when they're in a tough moment. They're upside down in their mortgage. They're mm-hmm. behind on their bills. They just lost their job. And they're not sure what they're going to do. And they stop themselves from doing anything because they're afraid of what people will think or what people will say. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, don't let your pride poison your prosperity. You might have to get a second job driving an Uber or a Lyft or walking at Walmart or even working at McDonald's yeah. or something. I don't know what you might have to do, but... 
don't don't stop yourself from getting out of that mess as long as it's legal and moral it's okay Mm -hmm. yeah okay and it's not permanent i think that's the important thing that's right it's not permanent it's just to get you past this little bump in the road Mm -hmm. so i have had friends who who have done part-time work as security guards at night Mm -hmm. and have been able to get past that tough moment or help themselves out to help dig out a hole. I've had friends who took jobs as driving an Uber because mm-hmm. they just had to, you know, I, I got a little tough moment here. But it mm-hmm. wasn't forever. They did it to know long enough to be able to get their finances in order. And then they went back to doing what they did before. Mm-hmm. So all of that, there are seven steps. I won't go through all seven because I know you got mm-hmm. uh, we've got limited time. Fine, but <laughs> but the first is don't panic, don't willingly participate, no commiserate, don't let your pride poison your prosperity. Number four is don't stop thinking about the power and the possibilities of tomorrow, which means yeah. when you're going through a tough time, keep one eye on the problem, but also one eye on the possibility. Keep your dreams and goals working all the time time even if you're dealing with a foreclosure remember what your goal is what your dream is Mm -hmm. what you're trying to do number five is be proactive Mm -hmm. proactive is the freight taken from the book the seven habits of highly effective people by stephen covey that's a very powerful word i was on tour with uh, Dr. Covey in Australia. God bless him. He passed away two years, two years ago. But we were in tour mm-hmm. about three, four years ago in Australia and Sydney. And uh, I asked him back, I said, what are the most powerful of the seven habits? He said that two of them are the most powerful. Win-win, mm-hmm. think win-win, and be proactive. Mm-hmm. So be proactive means to take action before you need to. In other words, here's how we really should say it. Don't wait for your ship to come in. Swim out mm-hmm. to it. Swim yes. out to it. Get on, the, get on the ball and go on and swim out to that ship and don't worry about the fact that it's not coming as quickly. Go get it. Don't wait. Go get you know, it. Jonathan yeah. Winters, the great comedian, said, I kept waiting for success to come and it didn't come to me, so I went to it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you got to go and be proactive. Go make stuff happen. I like you. You 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 made this show a popular show online, all over. My my, my publicist said he said you got to be on her show. She's fantastic. <laughs> uh, I said, well, he said there are thousands of, of shows who do podcasts. But she has worked hard. She's got an audience. <laughs> you know, it, it didn't come to you. You went to it. No. You you made it happen. That's true. All right, so I, I want to applaud you. I'm still you. surprised I did, but it's happening right now. And it's, 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 it is one of those things I tell everyone. It's like, I had no experience with, you know, talking to guests. I'm not a radio host. I, I have no training in this whatsoever. But I really wanted to share people's stories, stories that like yours that are so inspirational that I want people to hear, especially millennial audiences, uh, people like me out there that need some guidance when their finances. And so I... I did some research and I figured it out and I did it. And guess what? It's almost been a year. It's so if I can year. do it, And you're doing could great do it. too. People are talking yeah. about it. There's a buzz in the, in the atmosphere. I, I, you know, yeah, I got a lot you. of invitations and I can't do them all. But this one, he said, you got to do this one. She is dynamite. Okay. Her show is really getting good numbers. So, you know, that's because you did not sit back and wait for things to happen. You were proactive. Mm-hmm. So I'm encouraging yeah. others to be proactive. Some of you have got goals and dreams that you've been talking about for years. You want to go back to school. I encourage you to go back, even if you can take one course at a time. Some of you said, I want to start a business. Well, I'm encouraging you to get started, even if it's a small on a small level so you can get better, you know. You know, uh, some of you have been saying that I really want to write a book. Well, start one page at a time. Whatever it is, start. Just get started. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And you'll be amazed Absolutely. how the second comes and the third and the fourth and things might happen. Number mm-hmm. five, uh, uh, number six is be creative. Be creative. Be creative. You- Use your creative juices. Use them all. Use every gift and every blessing and every ability you have within your arsenal. Many, many of you have some gifts that you didn't even know you have. Or you, just like you said, you weren't sure you were going to be a radio uh, interviewer, mm-hmm. but you just got a gift of, about your personality and sharing your ideas and, and being perky and upbeat. So that <laughs> is a gift. And number seven, this is a big one. Mm-hmm. Be prayerful. Mm. Now, actually... That's number one. Oh. <laughs> How you like that? 
But I purposely ah. left it or put it at number seven for mm-hmm. a reason. Because I found over the years, you know, I have a doctorate in mm-hmm. theology and a master's yes. in theology. And I found that far too often people of faith will pray mm-hmm. and do nothing else. Mm. They'll pray and do nothing else. But scripture says faith without works is dead. Yep. So you've got to act on your faith. You've got to act on it. And so that's why I put it at the back. A lady came up to me one day and she said, I, I want a job. I said, okay, what mm-hmm. are you doing to get a job? She said, I prayed about it. I said, great. She said, I said, what else? She said, oh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, that's all? She said, yeah, that's all. I'm waiting, for the, the, I'm waiting for God to give it to me. Well, you know, my friend Wally Amos, the great famous cookie man, famous Amos, he mm-hmm. said something to me when I interviewed him on my XM show. In fact, that's one of the interviews that I get. Yeah, I listened away. to that interview. Isn't that great? Isn't it amazing? It's great. It's a great interview. Absolutely. So he said, if you want, he said, most people are waiting for God to drop something in their lap. He said, I mm-hmm. found that if you want God to drop something in your lap, it's best to put your lap where God is dropping stuff. Okay. <laughs> 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 so I'm encouraging people all over the country to take action. Pray mm-hmm. and then move your feet. After you pray, mm-hmm. move your feet. So those are the seven steps. And then in the That's back amazing. of the book, we have 10 case studies from people I've, I've interviewed on my XM show, 10 folks who have gone from broke to millionaire or billionaire and how they did it with life lessons. So get the book. In fact, I'm telling everybody who's listening to go get five copies. Go on my <laughs> website. Go to willyjolly.com slash greenbacks. willyjolly.com slash greenbacks. Get five copies. And if you request, I'll autograph them. But get five Ooh. copies. Get one for you, one for your fa- a family member, one for a coworker, one for a friend, and then one for somebody you know who's going through a tough time and needs a blessing. Mm-hmm. Is give them five, get five copies and give them to people and they're reasonably be priced and you'll be amazed how not, not just help you, but how helping others has an impact for your future. So Absolutely. those are the things I would encourage everybody to do. I'm, I'm excited about the response from people who are emailing saying they love the messaging and they have been inspired by it. So that's why I wanted to write it and I'm glad it's doing well. Absolutely. Well, that's amazing. And I'm excited to uh, hear what some of my listeners think about your book. And I'm excited to go through it myself. And yeah, I'm just excited. This was an amazing interview. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm like, again, pumped and ready to take on the world after talking to you. Well, you're awesome. Congratulations on the great job you're doing. I want to encourage everybody if you uh, first go to my website and get the free gift, willyjolly.com slash gift. Also get the book, willyjolly.com slash greenbacks. But also find out where I'm going to be. I have my schedule on my uh, mm-hmm. website. And if you see the Get Motivated Tour, it's coming to a city near you then come and visit and sit in the audience and then come up to me at, at the break and when I'm out taking pictures with folks and let me know you heard the interview here and that you are excited and I look forward to personally meeting and hugging your neck and talking about the possibilities. Fabulous. Well, I hope you come to a city near me. <laughs> I hope so. I hope it will be soon. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, thank you again, Willie, for joining me, and I wish you all the best. And I, I look forward to listening to more of your uh, your radio show. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day on purpose. And remember, as I share with my XM audience every day, your best is yet to come. Remember that. And wasn't that an amazing episode? That was episode 42 of the Mo Money podcast. Make sure to check out the show notes. I'm going to include a lot of links um, to do with what Willie Jolly mentioned throughout the show that you'll definitely want to check out, jessicamorehouse.com slash 42. I want to thank Willie again for joining me on the show. He was such a treat to talk to you, and I'm like a Uber fan now. I'm going to listen to his show every every new episode. So thank you so much.